What's up, everybody? We're back with a new episode. It's your girl, Natalie Nadine, the host of Unapologetically Her podcast, the podcast that's for her by her. Unapologetically Her was designed to be a safe space for young women navigating the challenges of adulthood. No longer will we apologize for making choices, whether right or wrong. Instead, we will own our truths unapologetically. Created to tackle all things female, I interview women of all ages and walks of life to help empower, embrace, and educate other young ladies like myself. For today's episode, I would like to welcome Tarayo, and today we'll be discussing content creation as an outlet for moms of young children. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I just love her accent. Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Before we get into anything, tell everyone like what you're about, who you are, what you do, where they can find you, go where they can run you a check. Go ahead and promote yourself. (laughs) Okay, so hi, my name is Torayo and I'm the host of the Life in Brown podcast. And outside of that, I am a mom to a nearly two-year-old daughter and a wife. And I create content on the side. So I have a day job. I work in higher education in project management, but I'm moving more towards the, um, I'm actually starting a new role soon, so in communication. So I, I started the podcast more like in a way to help me get experience because I felt like creating content myself would be like a good thing to show employers so i do that as well as so i host the life and brand podcast and i have like my, my family responsibilities and work so I'm trying to balance everything and still have like downtime i don't know how i do it but yeah it's giving girl boss <laughs> well i don't know i try <laughs> I love it. She's so humble. She's like, I try. No, girl, you being a boss. How you mean all that? <laughs> well, people are like say, you know, like you don't want to like glamorize. Like I don't want to like the idea of like always working because sometimes I like like girl boss. I guess like I want to do many things, mm-hmm. but I also want to like what's that thing? Soft life. Yeah, I want to like enjoy. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's like balancing the two. Like girl boss. Yeah, I want to do that, and mm-hmm. then also like relax as well i like to relax too girl yes and that's the thing like you said it's about finding that balance Mm -hmm. a lot of people like you can only do one or you can do one and not do the other we're getting into that but yeah Mm -hmm. it's about finding that balance yeah i told you i love when people start dropping gems and it's only the beginning tell people where they can (laughs) find your podcast go ahead so you, so you can search for Life in Brown wherever, wherever you're listening to this podcast, you can find it as well. So Spotify, our podcast everywhere. So, yeah. Nice. Oh my gosh. So you guys, like we said, we're going to get into it. And I want to start with the first question. So tell us about the type of content you create and what inspired you to start. You kind of touched on that in a little bit, but we're going to go into more detail. So I presently, I have a podcast and I recently started a newsletter and well, with social media, I mainly use Instagram. So the type of content that I create on the podcast, I was, I would describe it as more like lifestyle. So sometimes I have like author in, interviews with authors. So I like reading mm-hmm. fiction books in general. So sometimes I have authors come on the podcast to talk about their books and also some career motherhood content and, um, just maybe things that happen in general like popular culture or society to talk about those as well sometimes on the podcast and the reason why i started a podcast so i've experimented with i started with a blog like five six years ago and then i realized like i wasn't sure if i liked writing so i was like mm. i don't know if i want to have a blog so i tried youtube and then youtube you know you have to like come on camera you have to set it up you have so i stopped yeah. but the good the, the thing is I actually bought a camera and then the, but the good thing that came out of me doing youtube was that my husband just like photography and videography on the side here in the UK. I forgot to mention I live in the UK. I live in Nottingham in England. <laughs> and if you wonder where the accent's coming from, ooh. <laughs> yeah. So, so the good thing that came out from me doing YouTube was because we got a camera. So he started like playing around with it. And now he has like a full business from, so at least something good came out of me doing That's YouTube. Amazing. Even though I stopped. Yeah. So he started using the camera. Now he's like, well, into photography and videography. That's like his business on the side of his day job. And Mm -hmm. so I, so I, and then I got into listening to podcasts. I think maybe 2016, around time I started blogging. I started Mm -hmm. listening to a lot of podcasts, but I was listening to a lot of like white American voices. So I was listening to like things like Gimlet Media. I don't know, like Startup. They had this podcast then. So I used Mm -hmm. to listen to it. And I, I enjoyed listening to like the stories, but I got, but then I started thinking like, I didn't really, I didn't know that many Nigerian 
um, voices from Nigeria. And I didn't really hear that. I know now there are a lot of Nigerians doing, making podcasts. Mm-hmm. By the time I did, I wasn't really listening to any Nigerian podcast. So I was like, I didn't know Nigerians making podcasts. And then I, so I said, okay, let me start a podcast. It can't be that difficult. So I bought a mic. I know, like, I don't know why I thought it can't be that difficult. And then I started a podcast. And I've been, I, I started in 2019. So three years ago. Mm-hmm. I, during that time, I had a break because when I had a baby, I just couldn't think about a podcast. So I, I was taking breaks as well. I think, Natalie, you've taken a break recently as well. Yeah. Just like family things. So things happen. But right now, I'm trying to be consistent with it. So, um, so I'm still like figuring out what type of content works because I started a podcast not knowing that podcast is more than actually making a podcast. There's like the podcast marketing side. Mm-hmm. Know. So like you end up doing both and you're like, Oh, how do I get people to engage? How do I get people to do all of that? So there's a lot. So now I'm kind of guessing into some days I feel like, do I still need to make this podcast? I might like run out, but then I really enjoy it. So I mm-hmm. keep going. So that's, so I think I said why. So that's, that was why so I started a podcast because I didn't see voices like mine. And then I continued because I felt like I was learning something and I really enjoyed the process of like meeting people. And I really enjoy listening to podcasts. So it's just something that I enjoy. So I want to make mine as well. Yeah. You know, what's funny. And then you're talking about like, again, the representation and I'm very big on that, especially representation in media as a black female, as a minority. And like you said, you didn't see a lot of Nigerian podcasters at the time. Representation in media is so important. And that's, I think one of the reasons why I started as well, where it's just like, you know what? Be that face you want to see. We keep saying we don't see, we don't see it. If you have the courage, if you have the equipment, if you have the knowledge, or even just the drive and the passion for it, go ahead and start it. And even as well, you're talking about, um, in your intro, talking about using that as experience for jobs. Can I tell you, it works. Because I started Minds back in 2019 also. Mm-hmm. And I did my, was my schooling in communications. I did my postgrad <laughs> in public relations and corporate communications. And a lot of times when I get hit up for job offers, they always reference back, oh, we saw unapologetically her. We saw what you do with this podcast. And I'm like, you looking at me? The (laughs) podcast? The thing I am not consistent with? Okay. (laughs) So now I'm like, you were like, okay, let's find that niche. Let's build the consistency and let's build up. So everything that you're saying is exactly spot on. You just never know where things like this will lead you. You dabble into whatever like like you said blogging youtubing trust me been there done that with you too realize <laughs> not my thing writing all the time eh i'm trying to get back into that being on camera every minute i'm like y'all want me to dress up and do all no <laughs> we tried it was nice for a minute and i'm like okay i'm bored next so i feel yeah. you <laughs> yeah it's uh, but i think with podcasts now because of like video like v- right now with vi- i think you might use part of it on youtube as well i think <laughs> yeah. yeah so so like with podcasts as well we're kind of i think moving more towards vi- having a mix of both so i think mm-hmm. I'm, I'm getting more comfortable with being in front of the camera as well so <laughs> i love that for you and i think it's a different kind of camera because youtube is like you can't not really you have to put on a facade but you kind of have to be like you have to be just up you have to look a certain way podcasting is like we're literally just recording our conversation. It's like a FaceTime call. Now, if you want to watch it, you watch it. If you want to listen to it, you listen to it. We're giving you options. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my next question for you is, where do you think the ideology came from that women must abandon who they are once they have children? Because I feel like there's a lot of that kind of like stigma that once you have kids, you can't do this or you have to put yourself aside. It's like you kind of just forfeit who you were and what you did. Um, I think is um where the ideology. Well, like I, I'm like I'm Nigerian, so like there's this. I'll say I don't want to generalize for like the whole of Nigeria, but I'll say like from the family where I'm from, like mm-hmm. I like during the pandemic I started baking. So that was just before I had my daughter. I was pregnant at the time and I was born. So I said like everyone was baking banana bread and all sorts of things. So I started baking, <laughs> and then I, I remember when I had my daughter, my mom was like, ah, "Okay, so you probably may not have like." I, since, I, since I've had her, I think I've baked maybe three or four times because I've just not had the time or, well, even mm. if I've had time, like maybe there are other things I'd rather do in my time. So I started, th- she was like, oh, maybe when you, you know, when you're done with having your children and they're a bit older, maybe they're like three, they're like four, then you probably go back to baking because then you have the time. And I started thinking of the fact that there's this assumption that like, so maybe I'll wait for like the next eight years before I'm able to like do some of the things that I want to do. Because, <laughs> because, because like, so I, there's also like the, 
just like conversations, mainly with my mom, just like understanding there's certain things that, okay, maybe now you have to like prior, prioritize, abandon some of your interests because you don't, maybe you don't have the time. Mm -hmm. or even like if you're too ambitious for example so if you're someone that's like very focused on your career i've heard things like oh you need to like women these days maybe we're too ambitious like like we should just focus on you know the home and family i think i'm looking after my my i said my my husband and my child they're very important things but i think also i think it just also because i have videos i feel like even though she's too little to understand i still Mm -hmm. feel like it's important that I do these things. So I think the ideology of women should do I think it's just society and just mm. traditional norms. And and I'm at that point where I'm just beginning to like question all these things, like who says I can't do this or why can't I do that? Like, why can't I, if I want to, I don't know, have a full-time job and do other things, why can't I do that? Why do I have to like abandon? Because with men, they're, they're able to do things. I see men with three children, four children. They still have a full time job. They still have. They still do everything they want to do. Yep. So like, <laughs> well, why? So why can't if a woman wants to do this and do that, why can't we get the support that we need? So I think that's um really important. Like even this podcast, like today, I had to because I have a daughter. So of course, like she can't be in the room while we're recording because it will be too noisy. She won't let us record in peace. Mm-hmm. So like, I I get support. So my like my husband understands that. Like today, so he took her out. Um, of the house they've gone out for the day for the afternoon yeah. so that i can have like this space so i think it's really important that men can see if their wives show interest in something to like support it i think that goes a long way um for women to progress and just do the things that we love and enjoy men i hope you're listening <laughs> because you, you got a good man girl because unfortunately <laughs> it's true and like i find it even like whether you have kids or not just even like married or not just in a relationship if that support isn't there then it's it, it does become very hard and very challenging to continue the stuff that you want to do not saying that you need that to continue but when you have someone who's not who's not showing that support and it's like okay but if the shoe was on the other foot i would be doing it you know, we're showing the support. The men always get to pursue their dreams, but it feels like once the women start, it's like, okay, but you can only do that one thing. But then, like, you, I still need to call this person. I still need to do that. No. Where is the, again, the balance? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just, I just remembered as we were speaking, like, I, there was a time I was um, struggling a bit with my podcast. So I was not like struggling. I was like, oh, I don't know if I still want to do this podcast. And I was talking to my husband. I was like, you know, you don't have to do this podcast if you don't want to do it. But um, it, he he supported, but he he was like, you know, you don't have to do it if if you don't have like if you're you're not sure you still want to do it. But anyway, <laughs> I kept going, and I'm glad I kept going because recently I had like an interview, and I've been able to use like things, the skills I've gained from this podcast, and yep. that like helps me into the new world that I'm moving into. So I feel like if I had given up and said, oh, blah blah blah, like who knows maybe i wouldn't have gotten that role and been able to move into something i want to do so i think support is important and also like maybe from our from, as a woman maybe just like persevering sometimes with things oh, <laughs> I don't know. yes and i think that's it because like kind of like once we have that one like speck of doubt and like ne- negativity we feel like okay we need to back off of it this is not for me so yeah perseverance is a big thing because i feel like there's a lot of times too when i did the blog and when i did youtube and when i started podcasting and i'm like Okay, but is anyone listening? Do people really care? And sometimes it could be that one person, like you said, that pushes you to be like, let me do this. Or sometimes it's kind of like that switch goes off in your head and you're like, you know what? Forget what they say. Forget the haters or whoever. I'm going to go because at some point I'm going to reach where I want to reach. And like you said, you didn't know this was it was going to lead you for like this job and this position. But to see that it took you there that's what pushes you even more and that like lights the fire be like i need to keep this going yeah yeah <laughs> oh girl you're motivating me i go after my <laughs> own heart right now because i am seeing myself in you <laughs> <laughs> so my next question for you is has there been a time when you felt as though you had to sacrifice like who you were for your child um- I would say yes, because right now my daughter is very young. So mm-hmm. she's, she's still a toddler. So I feel like I'm in this stage where I think I am so, like that. There, there's only so much that I can do at this stage, I think. So mm-hmm. even what, well, even though like my podcast is bi-weekly, I don't even think, even if my daughter was older, I probably would still do it bi-weekly. But I'll say there are days when I'm like, I can't, maybe I'm trying to like 
get like on Saturdays mainly because my husband does photography. So on the on Saturdays, like yesterday, I can't do anything podcast related. I can't do any most like social media, anything like that. I'm just like I'm just going to sacrifice everything I want to do and just focus on my child today, which mm-hmm. is a good thing. I love being with my child. So I think I'm just at that point where I have to that I think is yeah, like evening sometimes by the time I'm by the time she comes back because I work during the day like like a nine to five kind mm. of role. And then so she comes back from nursery. So by the time you get her to sleep, dinner, all those things, you know, you're tired, you're drained. Like so I think I'm at that point where yes, I am I probably would be more efficient or do more stuff if she was older and more mm-hmm. independent. But I, I'm at the stage where I just I, I think it's just being a mom to a toddler, like it's definitely more intense and more tiring. So I think yes, I'm I'm in the sacrificing stage right now. <laughs> But I'm still, but I still, I still try to do things here and there, and like have I like the little thing bits that I can do. But definitely is, yeah, this stage is sacrifice, the sacrificial stage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially like you said, like with her being so young, and you're not sacrificing to the point where you're throwing your whole like individuality away. Mm-hmm. It's more like you have to figure figure out, be like, okay, this thing made me at this age. This can't happen right now, but it will come back, kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or like, like you said, you found that balance with your husband. Be like, okay, Saturdays for him versus Sundays are for you. Yes. So yes, like I told him about this interview from the time he told me, I was like, don't forget that my <laughs> for <laughs> at this time I'm doing this interview with Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he that. knows. So we so we kind of balance each other. So yeah, that's how we try to make it work for us. So yeah. so that everyone is doing what they love to do and is happier. Because I think with you, I think both people, I think both parties in in the couple would be happier if everybody's able to do at least some of the things that they love yeah if not if not everything at least some well you kind of just went right into my next question because i was Mm -hmm. about to ask you for those who have sacrificed what would be your advice to them i think it depends if if let's say someone was interested in content creation and they've like sacrificed that because they're i think maybe just finding you, you may you, if you if you want to go after something i think even if you can't do it like 100 percent, like full steam it mm-hmm. might just be let's say for example i could if i let's say i wanted to make a podcast but i was very busy so maybe i could say i'll just do one every month or i would do one bi-weekly and then maybe bulk them or outsource bits if i can afford to like so like trying to still find do a little like instead of saying okay maybe i can't do everything do 10 percent of what you wanted to do so at least you still get to, some of the benefit and also like if 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 you sacrifice and you feel like you you let's say there's a there's a hobby or there's an interest if you can find let's say family that can help that can support you mm-hmm. so that you can then have the time for your own interests i think that's worth um thinking about and if you sacrifice i don't think it's anything bad to like give up stuff for your children because you know most of us chose to have them so like that time that you sacrifice you were pouring it into your children so there's like there's a reward from from that as well so i think not like feeling bad that oh i've given up everything that i wanted because there's still something good from spending time with your family and spending time with your children or or whoever like you were looking after so i think Mm -hmm. it's um so not not to feel bad about not to feel bad about that that's what i would say and to also and to also do that yeah, you can do you can do a little even if you can't do all. That's what I'll say. Yeah. Still try to keep that piece of you as much as possible. Yeah, that's yeah. Because like with outside of like content creation, like I like um so I'll give an example, like reading. Like I like reading books, like fiction, non fiction. Mm-hmm. So it could be like if if you can't like when I had my daughter, like the first three months, I didn't really I, I mainly prefer physical books, mm-hmm. but because it was harder, like when breastfeeding or doing stuff, I mainly read ebooks. And I know like some other moms use audio books, if that's what you're into. So, cause I could read them on my phone. Mm-hmm. So like finding ways to like still enjoy the things that you like, but not, but, um, but in, maybe in a different form, in a different form. And then now that she's older, like now that she's nearly two, I've gone back to reading physical books. So I think just adapting to the stage that I'm in and knowing that, okay, this is like a phase, even though it seems like the phase will never end, but it's um, still a phase. <laughs> I love it though. I love yeah. the honesty of that. Absolutely. Find, I love that how you said that. Find different forms to it. Because now there's so many options, so many different resources. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, you dropping gems for a lot of the mamas out there. Like, don't put it this way. Don't say no to yourself. Yeah. Then don't lose yourself trying to take care of someone else. It's not saying like, you know, they're not important or whatever, but 
you are no good to someone if you are not taking care of yourself kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel. Well, <laughs> my next question for you is what practices have you learned regarding balancing being a mom and staying true to who you are as an individual? Because you said, like, for example, when it came to books, you went to different forms. You went from the physical books to the e-books. So what other practices have you learned along the way? So I think for me, with one of the things that I'm trying to like implement with my podcast is that all my episodes are going to be shorter. They already have some really short episodes, but like they're going to, if I have guests, I think I'm going to like 30 minutes or less because I, I do everything myself. So that's like a practice, like, a, like an actual thing I'm doing. So because I, ed- I can't like afford to like outsource editing and all of that. So I do everything mm-hmm. myself. So what, so a practice that I have set for myself is to make sure that if the episodes are shorter, then they're faster for me to edit than if they're longer. So, um, then things like even in terms of balancing my time, I think I actually even put it on my Instagram recently. So people gave me tips like, like, so for example, like writing out. So before I'll get really overwhelmed with everything I need to do and then I'll end up not doing anything. So I'll be like, Oh my God, I have all these things to do and I'm not doing anything. So, so I said, okay, you know what? So, so now I'm trying to like have just, so I set like a goal, like, okay, today, what like just one thing to achieve so if it's just editing mm-hmm. one episode that's all so i know at least i've achieved that if it's just making one reel because with or if it's just like showing up on stories once a week like just like one thing that i've done so yeah. i try to like just set that one just one thing and then and also like and even with like the home um um domestic chores and all those things like mm-hmm. trying to like not Sometimes, like, today I have, like, a pile of ironing that I needed to do today. I was like, I'm not doing it. My, my daughter was sleeping. I was like, yeah, I'm not doing it. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to read my book and I'm going to sleep. <laughs> so, some days. I love so it. I love today, it. So, earlier today, that's what I did. I was just like, the ironing is there. The ironing is going to be there. And then mm-hmm. maybe later, when I'm ready, I'm going to go um, do the ironing. And, I, and I'm... I, so, everyone, all of us went to sleep. My husband is sleeping. My daughter was sleeping. I was like, so, why am I working? Like, I'm going to sleep too. <laughs> Like, how do y'all get to enjoy your beautiful sleep? And I'm still, uh, something's wrong. The math is not mathing. No, it's not. So that's what I did, like, this, like, Sunday nap situation. I was like, that's all I did. So I think yes. just, like, sometimes just, sometimes prioritizing rest. Because I feel like when I'm rested, then I can go back and then go and do all the other things that I want to do. So, mm-hmm. I, so I think in terms of balancing, it will be shortening, like, episodes and then also looking at things how i can try to rest as well so that i'm just refreshed and able to do the things i need to do when i finally get around to doing them so this is yes. like what i'm doing yeah i feel like that's just a form of self-care right there <laughs> yeah well yeah because i think it's needed like you can't even kill yourself <laughs> you can't you cannot you can't always be on go 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 and just burn out yourself no no ma'am no so that's just how I see yeah. Lady, she's giving you the gems. <laughs> Follow from the mouth of a mother with a toddler. A to- two-year-old to- toddler, right? Yeah, like, toddler, toddler, yeah. Right? She's, yeah, she's a toddler, yeah. See? From the mouth of a mother with a toddler. She's giving you the gems. She's telling you it's okay. I'm still lady. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so my next question for you is, how does it positively affect your child when staying true pretty much staying true to you through your interests, hobbies, your actions, etc. So I I think in the long run, so like with my daughter at two, so she, she I don't think she's I don't think she can understand she understands yet all the things that I do. But I think mm-hmm. as she grows older, I feel seeing me uh do things, have hobbies, have interests, have um a career, do other things, I feel like she'll she'll learn from that and I think that'll also just help us um it, as a young woman and when she grows older to like know that she can embrace different sides of herself and she doesn't just have to be like one thing for, for the rest of her life. So I feel that mm-hmm. has seen me do all these things that not necessarily that she has to do this say have the same interests as me, but that she can have her own interests. She can be her own person and pursue things that she loves and in, and she's interested in. So I think that that kind of motivates me as a person, like having maybe I don't know if if I had a son, I probably would feel the same. But I feel like because she's a girl, I feel like I feel like this sense of responsibility that I need to yeah. set a good example because I don't think it's enough for me to just say like, oh yeah, you can do whatever you want, but then I'm not. So I feel like just um 
seven as an example and just her seeing me and then she'll probably even do more than I am doing because she'll be older in like 20 years or something no no, maybe not 20 less than that but she would have more (laughs) she'll have access to more things that that I do and she'll probably be able to do more so I think I just I just do I do what I can do to just set that example for her because I just want her to see that you can be like at, because some people in Nigeria they say they like adulting a scam like adults it is um it's a say <laughs> that it like when you become an adult like it's all it's just nonsense like there's nothing there's nothing there but like yeah. being an adult can be can be free it can be good as well you can have a good adult life that you actually enjoy if you like it doesn't just have to be just bills and going to work mm-hmm. you can actually enjoy um being an adult so that's definitely something I want her to to learn and know yeah I love that. And I feel that exact same way. Like, I don't have kids myself, but then I think about, okay, my nieces or any, when we say any other young woman who could be watching a podcast or just seeing what you do, it's definitely really important to kind of set that good example, that girl, that good role model, like S kind of vibe and show that you are capable of doing these things. And like you said, especially 20 years from now, the resources we have now are great. But can you imagine once they get older? Because my nieces are like two going on three and I think like six going on seven. Yeah. And it's just like, imagine what they're able to do when that time comes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, put yourself out there, show them that there's so many things you can do. And like you said, even if it's not doing what we do, but finding their own path, it's so important. So critical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm kind of breaking those in a sense, like gender norms or like, I would say cultural, cultural norms, especially. Yeah. Yeah. I think mm. there's a lot like placed on women, like, oh, it's a girl's responsibility to do this. Is But then like, what if you don't want to do? What if you don't like cooking? What if you just, what if you just want, you just want to live? Like, you don't want to, like, like learn how to go because you want to cook, not because you want to do it for a man. Like I find myself like be edu- trying to educate myself and tell myself, like, I need to teach my daughter that. She doesn't need to learn. If she wants to learn, how to, you learn how to cook because you want to cook for yourself, not because you right. Need to cook kind of for like survival skills. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also like financial skills because you save money when then let's say buying or take away all the time. So that's yeah. the kind of things, not because you're, you know you're doing it for like some somebody else. Yes. Mm. It's kind of like breaking like those generational curses. It's not a curse, but it's like again those kind of rules that have been instilled. Like you have to do cook, clean this and that. No. Do it, for, do it for you, for your own, like, if you want, like, for yourself, not for someone else. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, see? Mm, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, my next question for you is, what advice would you give to those mothers struggling to find confidence and balance within? I, I think what I would say is that balance is, um, well, I say relative, so it depends on and sometimes, sometimes not attain. Sometimes it may not be attainable to like be able to do everything, but mm-hmm. just finding. I would say my advice would just be find little things that you love. That may, they don't even have to be expensive things. So, for example, with, like I mentioned about reading, I borrow books from the library. It could be something that yeah. doesn't cost a lot of money, so that we at least because I know that when you have let's say young children, for you it's can be quite expensive. So just find find little moments of. 10 minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes to just decompress and not allow it. Cause some days I have some bad days. Like we, like sometimes if, no matter how much I try to like be calm. So I think mm-hmm. maybe just like trying to find little things that you love and also maybe get your children involved if they're at the age that they can. Like I know that mine is little, but hopefully as she grows older, get her involved. Soon as maybe I record little sound something from, from, <laughs> what oh. so like trying to get the children involved in the things that you, enjoy if they can in any way that they can and just like and also get get support because i think in society is difficult to do if if you're doing it all by yourself so like mm-hmm. if you have family a spouse that can help those type of things they help with being able to um and also maybe just talking to other moms i've seen how they do it as well because like people have been moms for, for a long time so there will definitely be like other moms that you can talk to and be able to learn a few things from them. So that's why that's kind of what I do. And that's what I would advise any mom. And don't compare yourself to other moms. Don't think like, oh, she's that superman. Part. She's super woman. Like, how is she? Because sometimes you realize that some people have like a lot of help that you don't have. So like if, mm-hmm. if you see somebody doing like posting seven times a day on Instagram 
and like getting <laughs> tons of followers and you're like for me i'm creating con- like you don't know if they have like a lot of help that you don't have so like we just have to like run our own races and not try to compare ourselves with other with other moms or their parents yeah there's two things that you said just now that are like my favorite right right then and there where you talk about one the comparison because that's something that we all we do a lot of whether we do it willingly or unwillingly but we do fall into that trap of comparison and especially with social media because everything's right there in our face and you're right you don't know what happens behind the scenes you don't know if they have that team if they have that extra help or whoever that's pushing it or doing it for them while they're over there doing their mother duties or vice versa and then the other thing that you said that stood out to me as well is like when people say it takes a village and to communicate with people, I feel like a lot of time women like to play, like you said, like the superwoman role. But sometimes it's okay to talk to people, get that help, get that um, knowledge or education from someone else because they know something that you probably don't and can really help you in the long run. Yeah. Now, my last question for you, and I always say this is my question where it's bittersweet. Mm-hmm. because one well, is my favorite question but it also means we're coming to the end of the episode <laughs> so i want to know what does it mean to be unapologetically to rio that's this is i've never had this like question before so it's really <laughs> I, I love think, it <laughs> i think um what makes me Unapolo- uh, uh, the word I can't, unapologetically me there you go. would be hmm, I think being able to express myself and being able to like the theme of this conversation being able to pursue the things that, that I love and also being able to enjoy this life that I have because mm-hmm. you know it's not, it's not, it's not it seems long but it's not very long so like to enjoy yeah so I think what makes me me is being able to express myself how best, even through different mediums, be, be it writing, content. Yes, just being creative is what makes me me, I think. And being able to, like, enjoy stories as well. I don't know if that makes sense, but, yeah, that's kind of... <laughs> yeah, that's of kind course. of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I feel like that question threw you off a bit, and I absolutely love it. Because it's, really, it's one of those questions where you really have to, like, reflect and think about yourself and be like, it's kind of like one of those interview questions. Tell me about yourself. What makes you unapologetically you? Yeah, it's, it's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. trust me, you answered it perfectly. Because mm-hmm. that's what makes you. That's that's you being true to yourself and being true to who you are and what you love yeah. and what you're passionate about. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah I think it's been it's been really lovely like talking to you Natalie and just like sitting down and actually thinking about because you do all these things every day you don't really stop to like think about you know being mm-hmm. a parent creating content all of that and yeah. yeah and this is why I always tell people I'm like this is why I love when my guests kind of pick their topic because one it's something that you're passionate about but two when you actually start to get into conversations and you think about it and you reflect it makes you think of something that you never really thought of in that way before. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I, I first of all, I just love her. She's so cute. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And her accent. You made me I laugh too. <laughs> you got a really good accent. Uh-huh. <laughs> and ladies and gents, on that note, this concludes today's episode. I want to thank my guest, Tarayo, for joining me today. Make sure you follow her on all social media platforms. So go ahead, go and promote yourself one more time before we head out. Okay, so on Instagram, I, I'm at Life in Brown Pod. And on wherever you're listening to this podcast, you can search for um, Life in Brown um, Podcast, Life in Brown on Spotify our Podcast, and you can listen to the podcast as well. And I also write a newsletter that I've started recently where I recommend like podcasts that I've enjoyed and books I'm reading and things like that. So if you want to, and just get a little um, sneak peek as to what content goes on the podcast, so you can subscribe to that as well. You find the link in um, or either on my bio on Instagram or in the show notes for my podcast. So definitely check that out. And thank you so much, and Natalie. <laughs> Yes, thank you. And then as for the fo- as for the podcast, you can follow the show on Instagram at unapologetically her and subscribe to the YouTube channel unapologetically her podcast, watch past episodes and even check out my Oakland vlogs. You can listen to the show on all streaming platforms including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. 
Lastly, check out my blog on apologeticallyheard.ca. We are under construction, so you might not see anything up to date right now, but still head over to the website and you can fill out the form to be a guest on the show. Once again, thank you all so much for listening and we'll catch you in the next one. Much love. Peace.